Now some people uh, watch my videos after I uh, switch to heavy haul and they get this erroneous idea that as long as you have some money you can just jump in and you know buy yourself a 70 ton trailer and hey I'm gonna be making 20 bucks a mile not so fast now first of all uh, I really don't recommend people uh, going into this kind of uh, business without any flatbed or step deck experience okay um, you gotta learn how to chain how to strap you gotta know how to spread the weight on your trailer this is not a dry van or even reefer right this is serious uh, secondly you must be physically fit like I'm showing you these boards because uh, I loaded this cat 330 DL right and it's too heavy for Maryland because anything over 120,000 pounds gross requires a super special permit which takes you know a very long time to get so so now I'm removing these boards and each of these boards this is oak that I need to use for uh, our triggers you see over there because this excavator is so so uh, wide and those are eight feet long so those are even heavier so I use one under the under the boom so these are only only quote unquote six feet so each one is 120 pounds you know and you gotta move them so that's why I remove them now because I need to lose about 500 pounds but I'm gonna burn some fuel minus these boards so by the time I reach uh, Maryland I should be I should be fine Yeah, it does help to have a pickup truck. So now I'm gonna keep them till I come back. So these are 120 pounds because they weigh uh, 20 pounds per foot. So these are 160 pounds, <laughs> and you do need them because otherwise it's too dangerous otherwise the excavator half of the track sits in the air it can slip off you know so secondly speaking about uh, physical uh, you know readiness is you gotta use big chains these are half an inch chains and even though they're short like these are 10 feet long uh, but you need these half an inch chain and, and uh, See, binders, 13,000 pounds. So everything is heavy. Like I think each binder is like 25 pounds. And I'm not even uh, talking about the chains. And then, lots of times, you gotta be ready to deal with these machines yourself. If you saw my video, how I loaded this thing, two guys showed up in, a, in some track suits and they had no idea they had no idea how to load this thing uh, okay they helped me they kind of you know one of them was a spotter and he didn't know much about this but he did help me a little bit but this can be really dangerous especially these uh, big machines and so you gotta know how to secure them so they don't move on you because the, uh, this thing with the bucket was 80,000 pounds you know 
and uh, you can knock down a building you can knock down a bridge you can hit something because a lot of these loads are uh, oversized so I really 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 don't recommend anyone jump into this without prior flatbed and step deck experience and preferably once you deal with uh, regular loads on a flat just you should get some experience with oversized loads you know or maybe uh, like I did first I had uh, oh by the way use that uh, finally this is the first time I'm using that gift from uh, Norway <laughs> thank you uh, Santa Claus from Norway for that little gadget I put on uh, on the exhaust and by the way I, I was talking uh, when the day before yesterday I was talking to this guy from a cat and I said finally you're the guy to talk to you deal with the machine with these machines I said is this an urban myth or can you really damage the turbo if you don't cover the exhaust on the excavator when hauling it on the on the trailer and he got into like 30 minute explanation that yeah you know your diesel your um, turbo starts spooling there's no oil basically full damage <laughs> to the machine like you listen to him it's like the machine will turn to ashes by the time you reach your destination but anyway so it turns out it's not an urban myth you do need to uh, cover the exhaust so so I use that uh, thing and some sometimes exhaust basically uh, too big once I had the machine that the exhaust was like two feet in diameter I, I kid you not and so what I was saying I was saying that you need to be physically fit and you need to know how to operate these machines how to load them yourself so it's best to get some experience before right and then a very important part of jumping into this is you gotta know what kind of trailer to get just the other day I was talking to a guy who watched my videos and decided to get a 60 ton trailer he pulled the reefer, a drive-in, and a tanker, right? So the bank, I think lucky for him, did not give him enough money to get a 60-ton trailer, so he, he bought a 55-ton with a flip axle. And he got a brand new trailer, but uh, the same deck as mine, 26 feet, which is good, but he got a very short gooseneck. Like, look at my gooseneck, you know. I, I did this ever since I joined Landstar. This was my dream, you know. I wanted to be a heavy hauler. And all I was doing, I was researching, talking to different people and checking internet, you know, all these sources, forums, you know. And I'm proud to say that I did a pretty good job with the specking this trailer. Uh, you see how now I have three axles? Well, first of all, here's a typical load. 80,000 pounds, right? You got to decide... Like how whole, how heavy do you really want to haul? You know, uh, even with seven axles, like I have, right, four axle truck, three axle trailer, uh, you can only do up to eighty-seven thousand pounds. That's the maximum in the states. So of course, that's with eighty-seven, it'll be totally different, uh, difficult to spread the weight properly. So let's say eighty-five, and this is eighty. Okay, I, we lost almost four thousand pounds after getting getting rid of the bucket. Believe it or not, there was an oversized bucket, <laughs> real heavy. But still, this is here is a typical load, right? Uh, so now I'm 120,000 pounds, right? So all I need basically is a 40-ton trailer. I don't even need a 55-ton, you know? And the only reason I went with a 55-ton, even though initially I was laughing and people, everybody was saying, oh, you need a 55-ton. Oh, really? But I got a 55 ton because I, I, I'm not, I was not familiar with this company. And mostly you look at their website, they do like small trailers for pickup trucks, which kind of looked suspicious to me, you know. So I decided to go a bit overboard and get some safety cushion. And that's why I got 55, a 55 ton, even though I knew that I would never go above 85,000 pounds in my payloads. So basically you gotta know, you gotta do your homework. You gotta know what you're gonna haul you cannot just you know get a trailer and then start looking uh deciding what you because you're gonna just waste your money you know and then because i knew that i'd be using a lift axle uh i i knew i wanted a very long gooseneck because that's what you see how i did it like normally these these are my drives right normally 
the fifth wheel sits in here, right? Like on most most uh, trucks, when you have a three axle truck. But you must have a very long gooseneck so that you can move this to the your front drive axle so that uh, the fifth wheel sits basically in the middle, right? It creates like a tridom. And of course, here, the gap between the lift axle and this drive axle is the same as here, right? So that's how, that's another thing. You gotta know how to spec the truck because uh, you might wanna use your old truck. And I wanted it originally to do that, but I went with this new one because the frame is bigger. This one has 46,000 pound axles, 14.6 on the front. So 20,000 pusher and 18 speed manual tranny uh, and 3.91 ratio. I just wish I would have gone with the 410 uh, because it doesn't cost anything when you're specking a brand new truck, right? The, the price of the truck normally does not change uh, because of the axle ratio. But if I want to do it, if I decide to do it now and I decided not to, but that would be like three grand, easy. So you got to do your research, you know, uh, and this can be dangerous. So once again, so be very, very careful, especially on curves, you know, uh, when you go on the ramp. So this is not a joke. So you can easily hurt yourself or hurt other people. So, and what I did today, so as you saw, today's Sunday, I'm getting ready. I'm gonna uh, get closer to the border. So I lost, uh, I removed one of the boards to make it, uh, make it uh, lower. So now it's like 13.6. Uh, and uh, so now I am uh, much lighter. So I removed one board from here and two boards from there. Put them on my pickup truck. I checked all the chains. Everything looks good. When of course this excavator has some damage and uh, I made sure we noted that on the bill of lading so that the, the guy on the other end, the buyer, is not too surprised by stuff like this, by missing, missing parts of the track, you know. <laughs> so this is an old machine, but still runs good. By the way, he uses a Cat C7 Acert. I think it has like 300 horsepower. So a very handy machine to have in your uh, household, you know. Well, that was my quick Sunday update with uh, some words of caution for people that want to follow in my footsteps. So basically measure twice before you